morning everyone, I'm Michelle at Amity Hiding Travel Photography. Today I'm in Edinburgh to go to a few exhibitions, test some local delights and a wee bit more. Uh, so I'm going to be doing a wee few lives throughout the day, um, taking you on a kind of a tour. Uh, so stay tuned, we're just off to the first exhibition. Uh, just stepped off the train here at Waverley, Edinburgh Waverley train station, the main train station here in Edinburgh. Uh, you can see the Balmoral here in the background um, and on the other side here is Carlton Hill, uh, one of the highest viewpoints in Edinburgh. So yeah, stay tuned and uh, let's go off to the first exhibition. Hi, so we've made it up to Infirmary Street um, in kind of the old part of Edinburgh, a 10 minute walk from the Waverley train station. So today we're at the Dovecote Studios here on Infirmary Street and it's for the exhibition by Jock McFadden. It's called The Lost Boat Party um, and it's celebrating Jock's 70th birthday and it's a Scottish, um, <laughs> Scottish um, art here in Jesus. So we're... Uh, just heard it's actually it was 70th birthday Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So just got the update there. So it's actually his 17th birthday last year, and it's when he he's his up and coming birthday this year. He's going to be turning 71. So he's a Scottish artist, born and bred, and um, but so the, the place, the Dovecot Studios here, has got a, a long-term standing history in Edinburgh. Um, so it turned into a uh, tapestry studio in 1912. Um, previously to that, it was a historic bath here in Edinburgh. Uh, so I'll tell you more about it when I come out. Thank you. Hi, so we're just come out from um, having a wee look at Jock McFadden's art exhibition. Um, it's got loads of different inspired beachscapes, landscapes, um, there's a tapestry that's also been commissioned, collaboration between the Dovecot Studios and also uh, Jock McFadden. There, it's really interesting, it's on until the 25th of September, it officially opens tomorrow, that's at the Dovecot Studios down here on uh, Infirmary Street. Uh, don't miss the shop as well, there's actually really incredible um, artisan chocolates, uh, tea towels, giftwares, um, other like ceramic pots and teacups um, and cups. There's also a coffee shop that's open here too, um, and it's well ventilated, um, there's lots of space, so yeah, don't worry, it's all uh, pretty safe, we've got hand sanitizer at the door. Um, so yeah, it's well worth a wee visit. Um, there's fantastic views, so with it being an original bath here in Edinburgh, it's got uh, some of the original features. So from the balcony, the ceiling, there's the original bath sign that they've got in the gift shop. You can also see a core that's been taken uh, from the old swimming pool with a tile on it. So that's quite something to see. Um, so yeah, I've, I've never realised that this was an, an, an old bath here in Edinburgh, so yeah, it's quite interesting to discover what was on my own doorstep as well. So yeah, I hope you'll all come down and have a wee look at uh, Jock McFadden's um, art and the tapestry that was commissioned. Um, it's, it's really impressive. Yeah, so on to the next part uh, of Edinburgh. So haven't quite decided who we're going to head off to next, so stay tuned um, and we'll be with you again soon. Bye! Hi everyone! Hey, it's so our next instalment. So we decided after being on Infirmary Street, we cut across at Southbridge and then over past Chamber Street in um, the National Museum of Scotland, uh, past Greyfriars Bobby and then came down onto the grass smack and now we're here at the Venal. Um, Brody, Jean Brodie steps here um, at the top beside the grass market. So the grass market's in the old town of Edinburgh. You'll have maybe have heard of it being um, some of the oldest pubs being there. And it's also where the, the last hanging place, uh, the public hanging spot in Edinburgh. Um, and now here at the Venel, it's one of three places uh, that the uh, the old wall, the Flodden Wall, which was here in 1513, 
stood around Edinburgh. So a lot of people wonder why Edinburgh at the old time was so high. And back in those days, no other buildings were as high as what they were in the grass market and the old part of Edinburgh. And that was due to Edinburgh being a walled city. Um, so they, they, made, they put up this wall to keep out the English invaders, <laughs> sorry, but that's very true. Um, and in 1513, the, the English did invade and took down part of the wall. But So after that, they decided to make it higher and thicker. Um, and after that, there was no other invasions that took down any part of the wall. But due to that, that was... Um, you can see it was a bit of a hindsight error because there was nowhere else to build within Edinburgh. So they decided uh, to build upwards. So it went up to about 10 storeys in the old part of Edinburgh. Um, and yeah, it was, it was really overpopulated. You can imagine there was um, no sanitation, there was no fresh water. So it was, it was really, it was not the best of places to stay. So when the new part of Edinburgh was built, um, everybody that could afford to move out of the old town moved to the new town. A hundred years um, difference between the old town and the new town. So you can see behind me here, so one of three, like I was saying, behind me is the examples of the Flodden Wall. And the other two places where you can see it is at Greyfriars Kirkyard and also going down to the bottom of Drummond Street, just as it corners there at the Pleasance in Edinburgh. Um, so yes, yeah, it's, it's quite an interesting part of the city to see. And you can also see fantastic views here of Edinburgh Castle. The um, best time to come is really in winter when the, the tree here kind of dies back and there's not so much foliage on it. Um, but yeah, so here we are. So enjoy and um, I'll be back again with you soon. Bye for now. Hi there. Um, so we're here on Queensferry Street. I've just popped in just a quick 11 season stop here at the chocolate pastry shop on Queensferry Street. Um, it's a fantastic place to stop for a cuppa and a, a delicious, we had a Sicilian um, cannelloni and my other half had a lemon meringue and a little tart pie. Oh, delicious. Yum yum. It, it is. So yes, yeah, so we're from my last few video, so we were on the gas market up at the Bainal, one of the oldest parts in the old Escape the heavy boulder that was supposed to drag them to the bottom to drown them. 
that all took place during the, the Scottish referendum mostly uh, back when John Knox was uh, the Scottish Protestant minister of St Giles. So John Knox is a, an, an, a, a formidable character. Um, he hated women and he had almost 4,000 women put to the death sentence because he, he said that they were witches here in, in Edinburgh. Top there, we've got lots of herbaceous border with roses and other formidable, um, well, beautiful flowers and plants. So, yeah. So, let's turn you back around. Um, so, yeah, so that's it that's for tonight. Um, and I'll, I'll catch you up in a wee bit later. Hope you are all enjoying your day. See you for now. Bye. had a bite of lunch and now we're just waiting on the one o'clock cannon or the one o'clock gun um it's quite famous here in Edinburgh so I'm just going to turn you around um, and hopefully it'll be going off in just a moment So there you go, yeah. it's a one o'clock cannon from Edinburgh Castle. Um, it has been going off for centuries. Uh, it used to be a signal for the ships that came into Edinburgh uh, for the captains to, um, to time themselves uh, for the, what time it was locally here in Edinburgh. Uh, catch you later and uh, see you for the next stop. Bye for now! Um, so I like to come and see anything that relates to that as well. 
uh, whether it's botanical gardens or exhibitions. So I was really keen when I heard about um, Kate's exhibition here at the Scottish Gallery um, about the change of the seasons. It's called Between the Seasons and it actually shows you between, um, you, you know, it's mirror images on paintings. It's a um, mixed um, media from acrylic. There's charcoal paintings and drawings. There's also a um, fantastic, it's like, six or eight different little images and each one has a mirror image of whether it be beach, oak, um, elm, there's lime. I thought they were actually incredible and the detail when they're actually in leaf is really impressive. And so yeah, well worth uh, a wander along here to the Scottish Gallery in Edinburgh. Um, the exhibition is on, uh, it's officially on. Um, I have to double check exactly when it's on till, but yeah, I'll pop that in the comments below for you later. But hope you're enjoying the life so far um, as we take the ride to Edinburgh on our gallivanting this Travel Thursday. Um, so we're off now to another exhibition which has already started um, and maybe it's the best to last. So uh, bear with me and um, look forward to seeing you again soon. Hope you're enjoying your day. Bye for now. Hi everyone, last installation of the day and just as I imagined, gosh the, the best exhibition was last, oh my goodness, so we came down to the Scottish National um, uh, Gallery uh, down uh, Belford Road, uh, it's the West End of Edinburgh. Now we came down to see the uh, Ray Harryhausen um, exhibition, um, so it was called the Titan of Cinema. Oh my goodness, gosh, do you remember Sinbad the Sailor, the adventures of the voyages of Sinbad the Sailor? Now we're going back, um, gosh, to the 70s, but my goodness, I was brought up on Sinbad the Sailor and wow, to see all the models and their actual, you know, format, to see how everything was produced and how animation actually came about. Um, Harry Housen was said to be the titan of cinema, hence the name of the exhibition, because uh, he kind of brought about the animation and the really how cinema all came about. There was no such thing as the um, gosh special effects and all that these days. They, they, they were the actual models and everything before model format was produced in drawings. So from charcoal and pencil directly on paper. Um, and then of course the, the models were made and animation back then was, was painstakingly, um, gosh it took hours. So every minute detail, every movement, um, each, you know, each movement was then taken, a photograph was taken to then produce the cinematography. It, it's absolutely, it's, it's amazing, you know, I, I have a complete appreciation for how long this takes having studied animation for a year. Um, but yeah, it's definitely worthwhile popping down to have a wee look here in Edinburgh, if you're here. Um, yeah, it's, it's incredible. I'm, I'm so pleased that I got the opportunity to come down and have a wee look. So yeah, so it's Ray Harryhausen. You can book your tickets online. Um, it's £12 for an adult ticket. And yeah, it's definitely worthwhile. There's cafeteria and all that here as well. Um, there's some other exhibits and if you're a fan as well of Edward, uh, excuse me, Eduardo Paluzzi, you'll get to see some of his sculptures and all that in the gardens here as well. Anyway, that's me for today. I hope you've enjoyed uh, travelling with me through Edinburgh to see some of the exhibitions, um, the taste and some of the delights of Edinburgh, what there is to offer and I'll catch you all later. Have a good night. Bye for now.